Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I am your host, Doug Geinzer, and we're here in the studio today with Brendan Bussman, the uh, gala chairman of the 2016 Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Awards. For those of you that are new and joining the show with us today, uh, Inside Medicine broadcasts live every single Friday morning at 10 o'clock, and we broadcast right here in the studio, and we bring in guests that are experts in the area of healthcare, those that are doing great things, innovative things, medical education, medical tourism, things that just improve the quality of health right here in Southern Nevada. Uh, today, we've got our guest, uh, Brendan Bussman. Brendan, welcome to the studio. Glad to be here, Doug. Thanks for having me today. Yeah. yeah. So we're here today to talk a little bit about the Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Awards. Tell us a little bit about that. So this is our fifth uh, annual gala that we've had. Uh, it has continually built over the years and is by far not just the premier event that we work with uh, as Las Vegas Heels, but it's also, I believe, the premier healthcare uh, honoring event uh, in the Valley. You know, there's a lot of things out there that re- that uh, acknowledge our physicians and nurses and other providers, uh, but this is the cultivation of, of the award that uh, acknowledges the best, brightest, and those pioneers that, that have that uh, innovative spirit. Very good. So what makes it that different? So is it just because Las Vegas Heels spans across all of the different disciplines and the different areas? What makes it so different? I, I think you hit on, on a very good point. You know, one of the things that Las Vegas Heels has always prided itself on is being sort of that Switzerland, that representative of everybody. So it's not like a nurse of the year that you get with the March of Dimes when they do their event or the various other publications that you know, do best doc and that sort of stuff. This looks at across all platforms and says, who are the best, brightest, innovative, pioneering spirits that allow healthcare to continue to move forward in the Valley and make Southern Place a better place for everybody here. Yeah. So the namesake of the awards is Dr. Roy Martin. Yes. What can you tell us about Dr. Roy Martin? So he was the first surgeon, uh, came here in the early 1900s and set up shop. Um, by far the most pioneering spirit that we've had from the medical standpoint uh, here in Southern Nevada uh, that basically they laid the foundation for healthcare care here. Um, and we felt it best uh, when this gala started five years ago to go back to that, that root of where everything started with and have this uh, uh, gala named after him and, and have continued to be a part of this uh, wonderful event. Yeah, I think he built one of the first hospitals. I was taking a tour of downtown Las Vegas, and they uh, on the tour, they actually stopped, and they said, okay, everybody look down, and right here on the uh, sidewalk, you'll see a brass plaque uh, for Dr. Roy Martin, uh, and it was pretty uh, educational at the time. Well, I, I can imagine. I haven't taken that tour myself, but uh, I, I really would love to just because uh, I've been intimately involved with this event for the last five years, and you know, firmly believe in its future uh, and current success and, and obviously due in part to the, the wonderful work that he laid here uh, over 100 plus years ago. And it's, a, you know, obviously we're proud of it that he is the namesake. And I've been uh, talking to Lois Tarkanian down at the city of Las Vegas. Obviously, she's driving a lot of the charge for the downtown Las Vegas Medical District. Mm-hmm. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if we put little plaques about Roy Martin scattered throughout there? So maybe she'll... Uh, do that, and it helps uh, helps the gala. Maybe, and you know there'll be uh, plenty of space as we've expanded the medical district to uh, you know almost tripled it from its original size that they laid out. So uh, that'd be a fitting uh, tribute along there, and maybe they name a road after him within that too. Ooh, I like that idea. I like yeah. that idea. So talk to us about the event. How many people do you honor each year? So uh, it varies every year. You know, the first couple years we honored about four people. Uh, the last two we've honored six. We like to keep it to that small group out there of the. You don't want to honor 40. like four hundred top doctors. No, no, okay. it, not at all. <laughs> uh, you know, this is about uh, this is a special award. This is something that really, you know, gets to the cultivation of the best and the brightest, as I said. And you know, we may get uh, you know hundreds of nominations, and we can talk about that process a little bit later on here, but. You know, really what we want to find is is that cream of the crop, those that are, are moving the needle. Yes, there's great docs and great other providers in this valley that do wonderful things each and every day, but we want to find that, that top 1%, those that excel above and beyond that really are pushing the needle forward to make our healthcare system better here in Southern Nevada. 
That's awesome. And everybody, uh, you know, obviously I've been going to it for, for since it started, uh, but it seems to attract the who's who in Las Vegas. So tell us a little bit about those that attend the event. So it continually picks up every year uh, on who who attends. You know, I've been now to uh, all five of the events uh, that are out there. And obviously it depends on who's awarded, uh, and winning as part of those things. And, and here we've got the mayor. Yeah. We've got the, the mayors and, and their son, Oscar, Oscar and Oscar, um, <laughs> on there. And, uh, Oscar jr. Was actually one of our, uh, recipients last year. Um, uh, but it's definitely an event that not only brings together the top healthcare leaders, but the top leaders throughout our, our wonderful city and our Valley. Um, those can be business leaders, community leaders across the board. This has really become one of the premier events um, across the way to be able to say, hey, let's honor some of our best and brightest in healthcare and talk about how we need to continually move that needle forward to make our healthcare system better here in Southern Nevada. Yeah, I think it's that one time of the year that everybody just puts their differences aside, comes together for the best interest of healthcare, and we're all out there to celebrate and recognize those that are doing just amazing things. And, you know, in Las Vegas, we always say, uh, we do have some quality challenges, and we can't deny that, but our quality is caused by access. It's not bad doctors. We've got some of the world's best doctors right here in town. We just don't have enough. Uh, and this event, it's great because we do recognize those that are doing amazing things, doing good things for the community and, and raising the, uh, the level, the quality, and, and frankly, the, the perception of healthcare in Las Vegas. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's the key thing is, you know, you hit on some of the things where we continually look to improve as a community. Um, and it is about access, but we have some of the best docs and I've, you know, throughout my career in healthcare have been associated with phenomenal physicians, nurses, other providers that have sat here and really moved the needle to make a difference here in Southern Nevada to say, you know what, we're not happy with the status quo. We want to make it bigger. We want to make it better and we want to make it brighter. And this, this award, uh, helps do that to those individuals that, that do become not only nominated, but then selected, um, but allows us to celebrate those uh, achievements and honors um, together as a healthcare community. Yep. So when is the event this year? So it's, uh, uh, it's on October 27th, yep. uh, the Thursday uh, before we head into Nevada Day weekend. So it's um, like a three-day weekend, so people could really uh, whoop it up a little bit for the gala. They, if, if it was on Nevada Day weekend or any other, we expect them to whoop it up anyway because it's a go. wonderful event. But, uh, no, we, we've always tried to do it uh, here in the fall. And uh, the last two, uh, this one and the one before, we've, we've sort of, you know, nestled in there on that last uh, week of October of being able to host this. Where's it going to be held? Uh, it's going to be at the Four Seasons again this okay. year. They did a fabulous job for us last year. Um, we're happy to be able to go back to their uh, venue this year uh, and would like to continue that relationship in the future. But, uh, you know, I will say that uh, uh, this event has grown and continues to grow over time. Uh, that uh, we may run into some space constraints, which has sort of helped us progress up it's to the It's a good problem. Se- it's a healthy problem. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah, Four Seasons has been an utterly amazing partner of ours. Uh, they did a great job last year. Looking forward to uh, the event this year. How many people do you expect? So, last year we had 430, uh, uh-huh. right around there. Uh, we've seen about a 15 to 20% growth over that course of time. So, I fully expect us to be in the upper fours around five this year. Um, which is going to really sort of max out that capacity. That's why we want people to, to get in and get registered early. Um, but uh, I think it's going to continue to grow on that path, and, and we'll continue that way. So probably upper fours, around five, nice. maybe a little bit extra. So so have you secured an MC for the event, and who's the MC? So we have. Uh, we are, are going back to uh, our, our uh, hostess with the mostess, if you want to call it that, and Flo Rogers. I love that accent. Yeah. I just I, I turn on the station and it just makes me smile. You know, absolutely. She has been our MC for, for a few years with this event. Does a fabulous job. Uh, she, just a wonderful person and obviously dedicated to this community, dedicated to improving health care. And, and I think she really enjoys being a part of it as well. Yeah, she's you know, they've been a great partner to health care, what they do with Desert Companion magazine and what they do with their health care coverage. Amazing partners for the community, really looking out for the best interest of uh, the growth of health care in Las Vegas. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we appreciate that partnership uh, that they provide to us in a media sponsorship. Uh, and being really not only uh, in what they provide in assets outside of the gala, but what uh, Flow provides uh, in uh, keeping the event moving along and doing a fabulous job with these uh, 
uh, honorees as well as uh, uh, wrangling a few along the way to keep the event going. So. You know, it's a fast pace event. Uh, afterwards, I always love hearing the comments. People go, wow, you guys really kept it going and you fulfilled your commitment of getting everybody out here by nine o'clock. Uh, some of these events, I went to one the other day and I'm not going to call it out, but my God, I left at 1130 and some people said it didn't wind down until about quarter to one in the morning, which it's awesome. But that's a late night. Well, absolutely. And that's one of the things we, we've always prided ourselves on is, yeah, we're heading into a potential three-day weekend, but not everybody leaves town or has that Friday off. Um, so that's why we want to make sure for those that have to work. And, you know, I coming from the healthcare world, I know those days can start early at 6, 30, 7 o'clock with meetings already, that uh, if you're one of those people that has to go to work on the 28th, that A, you can have a good time on uh, Thursday night at the gala, but still be uh, home at a reasonable hour. And, and it's not an event that drags on and, and keeps everything, you know, uh, in perspective of, hey, we're here. We're here to honor some great people um, as part of that. And uh, let's enjoy the night, but uh, not let it linger on more than it needs to. There you go. So this year you're back at the Four Seasons. Yep. Where have you been before in the past? So uh, we've been at two previous venues. Uh, we opened up at Red Rock uh -huh. um, our first two years, actually. Uh, the stations people were fabulous to great us. Great partners. Uh, great partners in that. We appreciate that. Um, we uh, we thoroughly would have stayed there, um, but we wanted to move it to a much more central location. Uh, mm -hmm. We've always wanted to, over the course of time of this, held that a premier facility across the way. And Red Rock did a fabulous job for us. Um, our third year, which uh, was two years ago, uh, we moved down to the Mandarin Oriental. Beautiful uh, facility. Absolutely. Um, and they did a phenomenal job for us. But uh, frankly, the problem we discussed, the, the healthy problem we discussed is, is growth. Yeah. And um, we unfortunately could only be there one year because in that one year, we grew out the space. I mean, we were at uh, 360, 370, I think, that year, um, and then uh, grew to 430 the following year. And there, yeah. there just wasn't, I mean, that ballroom holds about 380 to 4 as a whole. Um, so it really it limited our capacity to stay there, but thoroughly enjoyed the partnership that they had with us and, and uh, would love to go back there if they had additional space. But as I said, we have a healthy problem that we continue to grow. I think if, looking back in time, I think it was the Mandarin event that really was that pivot point for the gala that uh, took it from a good event to a great event. Uh, Scott, if you could pull up, we've got an image from the 2014 awardees. And I, I think what you'll see in this image, we've got the, the roster of uh, the who's who. So, uh, Scott, it's an image called the 2014 winners. If you could pull that up, that would be perfect. Uh, and this was a... Uh, this was uh, taken down at the Mandarin. So going, you know, we've got Dr. Joe Hardy. Obviously, Dr. Hardy's been a staple in the community, done some amazing things. Uh, we've got Dr. Nevins, that was a world-class practitioner, Dr. McCourt, Dr. Barron, Dr. Cummings, and Dr. Volgazang. And it's, uh, you look at there, that's that's our superstars in Las Vegas. Absolutely. Well, and, and the interesting thing, so you look at, at these six uh, gentlemen here, um, and uh, the interesting thing is a couple of things with this is one, you've got world health, world class health care being performed by every single one of these people. Uh, these are people that I would go to. These are people I'd recommend my family, my friends, anywhere around the world to treat uh, whatever ailment they had. But the other interesting thing, and, and this is sort of passing on the torches, several of these individuals had people within their organizations or people that they'd worked with over time uh, that they sort of were passing the torch on to last year's winners and the yeah, 2015 yeah. awards. Um, and those get cultivated in some of the videos that we, you know, highlight some of the, the historic aspects that they've done over the course of their career. Um, some of them have been a little bit more colorful in some of their comments, <laughs> uh, which has been great and entertaining, um, which I think the audience appreciated as well. And we like to keep that little balance of, you know, seriousness with a little bit of lightheartedness of along course. the way. Of course. So. so we've got nominations coming up. I think you just opened up the process recently. Yep. We just opened nominations up about 10 days ago on June mm -hmm. 1st. Um, those will continue on through July 15th. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we like to keep about that 45 day window because a couple reasons, a, that gives people time to say, you know, who's my nominee going to be if they haven't already thought about, it. I will say that, that, uh, as this event has continually built, people get into the mindset of, okay, I've got this, I'm nominating this year. 
here's my here's my uh, my next nominee for the next year, and and mm-hmm. who can we get you know to keep at that same level? Um, but it allows people to get that process through. Um, it also allows those that maybe haven't been familiar with the nomination process in the past to be able to have enough time to get you know all the stuff together for a nomination, so they could put that great foot forward to say hey, as an organization, we believe in Dr. X or individual Y that really is moving the needle for healthcare here in Southern Nevada. Yeah, it's amazing. I've been fielding phone calls literally since February and March from members going, our nomination's open. Our nomination's open. When are they open? I've already got one prepared. Uh, So it's going to be great to watch this influx of nominees. How do people nominate somebody for this award? So this year we actually opened up a couple different ways to be able to do it. We still have the way we've always done it before, which is submit either via email or or, uh, old school on paper, if you want to call it that. Um, The nomination form that we have that we've held for the last previous, you know, four events. Um, we also now can go online to the Las Vegas Heels website and be able to go directly to the nomination link on there and submit everything online to be able to do that. So we took care of both uh, ways this time so that it uh, allows people a little bit more freedom and, and can get everything in and, and uh, get their nominees in. So you get all these nominations in by July 15th? Correct. What happens then? So we have a we have a very esteemed panel that has gone through this uh, pretty much for the last five years of the, reviewing all the applicants and and uh, it is a very difficult process. I, I will can imagine say, yeah. uh, being a part of it the last the last few years um, because there are so many good honorees that you sit there and go, how do you pick and choose who's better than? the other person because so what are you looking for like what is what, give us the details what how does somebody win well <laughs> it, it obviously depends on who's who all is nominated but you know i think you look at totality of what an individual does in their space you know you look at at what we had in honorees last year and you look at a you look at a doc that the research they do the way they interact with their patients you know are they doing you know, ph- phenomenal, cutting-edge clinical stuff, um, whether it be through surgical procedures or through clinical trials or stuff like that. You look at how they interact within the community and the space they do. What educational things are they providing? What, you know, collectively looking at their career, what have they done in, say, the 10 years they've been here or the 20 years or, or plus you know, you look at a, a Dr. David Steinberg, who was honored last year, who founded Steinberg Diagnostic Medical Imaging. Yeah. That, you know, obviously he's got, you know, over a half dozen facilities around the around the valley that started over by Sunrise. And the contributions he's made to imaging uh, in this community have been profound over the last 30 years. So y- you look at longevity, you look at stuff they're doing now, you look at how they interact. You know, you look at like Dr. Dylan went from last year. Um you know, that was probably one of the more uh, fascinating things that, that uh, in learning about his perspective is not only what he's doing down at the Cleveland Clinic and the Ruvo Center, but his interactions with UNLV architecture and, yeah, that was cool. and, and some of the other community things that you wouldn't think architecture and brain health and, and medicine all come together, but those guys find a way to say, how are we moving the needle to make it a better place for everybody involved? Very cool. So- can a non-physician win? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You know, I, I have in my own head of people I'd love to see nominated. I, I purposely don't nominate anybody, but every year I go through, hey, here's the people that, that I think may show up, just my own little personal thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of them do, some of them don't. But, you know, I think there's been phenomenal people in this community that haven't been a physician, that haven't been a nurse, haven't been a medical provider in any sort of way, that have made such a huge difference, whether they're uh, a philanthropist or whether they, you know, Look at what Larry Ruvo's done with Keep Memory Alive. That's that's that's, that's a that's a great example of one of you know people out there that have moved the needle, whether it be through philanthropy, whether it be through legislative means, whether it be through just its general commitment in a nonprofit setting, in a for profit setting, to say, hey, these people have done exceptional things to make a difference in our healthcare community, and they need to be recognized for it because you know. It, they're not a physician and they're not a provider in any sort of way. And this is one of those ways that you can cultivate that together. So we got a question from a guest online here and that guest wants to know, do 
you need to be a member to nominate somebody. Uh, you you do need to be a member to nominate um, as part of that. Um, those are the the ones that we are able to to do, um, and uh, you know we appreciate that. Um, we appreciate that, but that's one of those things. It's it's we have several different membership op- options at Las Vegas Heels for you to be able to jump on uh, and be one of those members, uh, either as an individual or with you as an organization. That's cool. And then so. Talk to us a little bit about the event itself. There, you had 440 people at the last event. Who like do people buy tables, buy tickets? What does what does that look like, and how does one go about doing that? It, it's actually a mix. It's actually a blend. I would say probably 80 percent of it is people that bought tables mm-hmm. um, in there, thinking through it. Probably about 80 percent. Um, and those are organizations, you know, that are obviously some of them are our key founding members and and big sponsors, our gold, our our silver, our bronze level sponsors uh, that uh, you know get a table. Sometimes they want more than one. Sometimes they want more than more than two. Sure. Uh, but then you have people, individuals, and those can be members. Uh, non-members can also come to the event if they want to, you know, be a part of it. They know the honoree or or they want to sort of get a flavor for Las Vegas Heels in there. Um, and obviously, we'd love to have them join after that. Um, but we did have a few members, uh, non-members, excuse yeah. me, last year in, in joining the event. And we welcome everybody to uh, join us. So if one of our viewers that is a non-member or, or somebody that has not attended before was thinking about attending, why would they want to go? What do they get out of it? What would they expect? So I, I think you get a couple things, whether you're a member or a non-member that wants to come to this. One, as I said earlier, it's the premier healthcare event uh, to bring everybody together. Um, there's a ton of events out there, but this honors the cream of the crop, and you're going to have the cream of the crop there in attendance. So it's definitely the who's who. So if you want to mix and mingle with healthcare leaders, um, if you want to mix and mingle with with key community and business leaders this is the event to attend to it's a great networking event it's a great way to showcase uh the phenomenal medical and healthcare things that are happening here in our valley uh and every year each and every year uh that we do this i learn more and more with our honorees um and have a greater appreciation and, and a deep understanding of the special things that are going on in healthcare here that really move the needle. And this event's a way for everybody that attends not only to learn about that, but be a part of it to help continue to move that needle. It's a great experience. It is. So this thing's grown year over year. So it started out at the Red Rock. It's advanced, went to the Mandarin. It's gone from, you know, a couple hundred attendees to last year having 440 what does it look like this year? What does it look like in the future? Where, where do you see this going? So, so I think I think that you uh, I think easily we'll hit you know that upper four or five hundred. But I can continually see this grow. I'd love to have it continue on the trajectory of a twenty percent, fifteen twenty percent growth every year. Um, I realize that may start slowing down as we get into the five, six, seven hundreds. Uh, and obviously, we'll have to find a different venue for that. Uh, as much as I love my friends over at the Four Seasons, I know that unless they blow out a wall, there really isn't space <laughs> for us, um, which I- I'd love to have them do, but I don't think they have any plans for that. But, uh, uh, you know, I continually see this growing. And, and obviously, part of, part of it is people see success off of what we've done off the last four. Um, and you've seen, you, you now are building this base of, people and the and the 20 people we've honored in the four years prior to this um that they want to come back and they want to continually be involved and it continues to highlight what they've done in their work and continue to do in their work in this community um and passing on that torch to the next class that's out there so it continues to grow yep somebody wants to go somebody wants to attend somebody wants to buy a table a ticket where do they go for that so they go straight on the las vegas heels website yeah um they can go into our uh, gala page and and look specifically at whatever level they want to jump in at whether they be a member or non-member um different sponsorship levels are on there whether uh they want to be just go in at a basic table um, or if they want to go in at a bronze or silver or gold level as part of that. Um, one thing, because of uh, our space uh, issues, you know, potentially this year, uh, we wanted to make sure and offer sort of an early bird pricing this year yeah. uh, that goes through July 22nd, which is just about 100 days out, a little under 100 days out from the, the event, um, really to sort of get some of those people in early 
um, just because we want to make sure they have a space and, and we they can get all the full assets available with uh, the invite and, you know, everything that goes along with the event. So people are able to go right online. Looks like there's a, a website that came up. It shows uh, how to go ahead and buy tickets and get early bird discounts. That's great, great, great stuff. So let's kind of, let's bring it to a close. You know, it's uh, the show is coming down to the, the tail end of the wire. Uh, let's kind of recap. So it's a, an event to go to. It's going to be held at the Four Seasons. Yep. Uh, on October 27th. Um, we look forward to hosting everybody there. Um, it's uh, literally a phenomenal event, and I think it's definitely the who's who of healthcare as well as our business community that really gets to be there. Whether you be, you know, uh, in a banking, a gaming, any sort of organization, healthcare affects all of us. And you want to know that you have the best people taking care of you, not just for you, but for your employees, your team members, all of those out there. And this is a way to hear about it, highlight it, understand it. Uh, and get involved with it. And uh, it's a phenomenal event at a, at a great price to be able to be there. And we hope we see everybody at the Four Seasons on October 27th. Fantastic. Brendan, thank you for joining us today here at uh, Inside Medicine. Typically, we broadcast here every Friday at 10 o'clock. We are going to be dark for the next few weeks as I do some traveling. I've got a wedding to go to over in uh, Germany. So uh, we're going to be dark for the next few weeks. But uh, look forward to us coming back online in early July. And we will be bringing on some more guests to talk about good things happening here in Las Vegas, whether that's in the world of medical education, medical travel, medical innovation, and medical development. So there's a lot going on here in Las Vegas, and you'll find out about those things and meet those great folks right here at Inside Medicine, broadcast live on Fridays at 10 o'clock. Thank you to our guests. Thank you for those folks that uh, sent some comments in. And until the next show, we will see you then. Have a great day. Thank you for having me.